Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. I talked about making an art journal out of a kid's book and I'd show the kid book in one of my haul videos so I thought we would start on our project today. I hope you'll stay tuned. So this is my book and I had used a little bit of my homemade gesso on it and in the information below I always put everything I'll include my gesso recipe but it's very very simple and uh, I like to keep a bottle of it on hand bottle container it's one half nope one quarter cup of plaster of Paris one quarter cup of water one half cup of white paint and that's cheap acrylic paint and one quarter cup of glue and that's like your basic Elmer's white glue and mine comes out looking ooh, sorry about that like this and sometimes I have to add some water to it because my lid isn't tight I'm sorry to tell you that my lid doesn't always play along with me but um, hold on and I'll spackle some of it out for you so you can see what it looks like when it's on the cover it's actually super wet and um, kind of bubbly but that's what mine looks like and you can do just about anything with it but um, I talked about this when I did my Dollar Tree a little um, visit and this is one of the Dollar Tree cutting mats that I use and it works really well for putting under or beneath no under or inside the pages like if you don't want your pages to be um, uh, glued together by whatever you're working on that's a great way to stop it from happening because you put one of those cutting mats between the pages and then your muck stays basically on top of the page so I'm not going to use that today I'm just going to basically do this where I go to the edges of my paper I had played with the front cover with some leftover paints that I had done with something and I thought well, I'll just I'll just put the paint on the front of this to get you know to make it all kind of one color and it worked really well now there's my cover and I'll make sure that all of my other pages stay open but that's how you do it then I'm gonna close that up I'm surprised it's it stayed this well because I haven't opened it for probably a month and it's still that wet so I'm really happy just saying so let me show you my next step and uh, in my little project I wanted to make this white obviously because I want a flat surface to start with not something that's really colored and I have dry baby wipes that are really handy for cleaning up things like this instead of throwing out your baby wipes if they get dry it works really well when you have something where you just need to wipe off the surface and the wet baby, baby wipe kind of makes it more just kind of smears things around and this makes it so you're not smearing things around you're just putting a little a little bit of um, baby wipe on there instead of wet baby wipe okay I'm getting that out of the way I'm going to show you my next step my next step on this project is I'm going to play with this napkin I really liked it I, I'm sure I either got it from my friend Elizabeth or I bought it at either a Christmas tree store or a Dollar Tree because I don't buy my napkins anywhere where I have to spend a lot of money on them and so those are probably the places I bought it and I think I've had these ones for a while I'm going to show you how to separate napkins in a way that if you haven't seen me do this you're going to say to yourself why didn't I do that before here's what you do you get some cheap washi tape just a little piece you don't need a lot and you're going to put it on the back of your napkin back like that then you're going to hold on to that washi tape piece and you're going to kind of do that where you pick at the front can you see that and slowly you're going to separate the two pieces now sometimes you're going to have another piece and so I like to kind of make sure that there isn't a, a second layer involved in this project and in my case there isn't so now you've seen that much 
And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply it to the front of our book. Now I'm not going to do that until my uh, gesso is dry because obviously it's not going to stick to anything. I could uh, um, have just painted it white and then applied it, but I like the idea of having gesso because I'm also going to scrunch this up on there so that there's a lot of texture involved. So. I'll be back as soon as the gesso dries and we're ready to go on to the next step. We're going to take some collage podge and we're going to put it over our front of our book. I like to do it this way because then I can make sure I get the corners and I, if I have to add more, I can add more after I get the napkin on. But I just want to make sure at this stage that we just have enough on that we can put our napkin over it. I'm going to straighten it out. I think I'm going to do more like these. Oh, bit more. Ooh. Okay, that's what we'll do for right now. Then we'll come back to it once it's dried a little bit. And I'm going to add some of the collage podge to the over the top. And I might be doing some texture paste over there as well. So here is our book now that it's dried. And I did trim off the edges a little bit. All I want to do is very quickly put a layer of mod, well, collage podge over the front of it and then we'll let that dry and then I'll go on to some of the mixed media I want to do on it. I just want to do this fast so that we can, you know, every every step of this, because you have to let it dry, every step takes that much longer because of the drying process. So you just have to, this is not one of those short, quick projects that you can make in a couple minutes. Well, it doesn't take long to make, it's just the drying in between that takes so, so long. Get your edges really good. That's the most important part when you're doing something like this, is making sure that you've really painted the edges. And if anything tears or comes off, just add a little bit in its place. Okay. I also, in case you didn't know, I also did this end. So I need to put a little bit on that too. And then I think we're going to do some um, different layers of things and try to make it more interesting. And that's, what, that's where we stand. I thought maybe I would do something on this. I don't know if I want to go through the middle or if I want to do speckles or I don't know if I want to do the chicken wire just down through this center section because I really would like to have more pink on this. And I don't really want to interrupt the table part of it, but I do like the idea of maybe breaking it up and having, as I said, like a row of this going down to the center. I'm going to use this Nouveau Mousse, and I have to be honest with you, I'm not really pleased with this at all. I'll put it on here so you can see it. I um, opened this. This is the first I've opened. I had to take the seal off of it, and it was already really hard. I added water to it because I'd read somewhere that that's what people do when this gets really hard and this is the consistency I've gotten it to. It seems a little bit strong like color wise for what I'm looking for so my plan is I'm gonna I'm using a little craft stick here you can buy those at the Dollar Tree if you're looking um, and then this is hold on I gotta find the name of it Faber-Castell Texture Luxe Pink Flambe of course that's the name of it and then this one, I'm sure, is just pearl, because that's right there. And I I'm, I'm, don't want a lot of this. I just want to try and tone it down a little bit if I can, because it's super duper pink, and I don't love that dark of a color. And then, the other thing I want to do, I'm going to use some Dollar Tree uh, LA Colors Eyeshadow, and it comes up, if you open the bottom of the bottle, 
and I'll attach a video at the end that shows you how to do that. It, you get a, a lot more product out of the bottle than if you just open the top and try and shake it all out. Uh, but anyway, I like it because it adds a lot of sparkle to whatever you're mixing up, and in this case, it's going to be a texture paste. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start toward the bottom of my um, spot. I'm going to do right up through the middle here, and hopefully, I can. I'm going to put some tape on the part of this I don't want. I really only want a certain part of the stencil to show up. I think I'm only going to, I'm only shooting for maybe that many rows. I'm just going to tape it down. And this is just your basic painter's tape. I buy this at garage sales or wherever I can get it really inexpensively. Okay, and before I put this down on my paper, I'm going to do this. And I'll make sure you see it. I'm going to rub it on my skin because that will take some of the sticky off and you know, the oils from your skin are great for this. It makes it so that you don't end up having um, your paper ripped underneath. So. If you don't want your paper ripped, that's what I suggest, just rubbing a little bit of it over your skin. And that should be a good start. But I thought it would be fun to take one of my other palette knives and just kind of put a little bit of it um, on some of our flowers so that we get a little bit of texture on them. Like these tulips, I thought it'd be neat to just have, I'm using it almost like a paintbrush. Hopefully I'm in screen. I think it would add, it'll add um, dimension and color to this because the tulips are kind of faded into the background. So I thought I'd just play with them a little bit. I don't know how this is going to look, but you never know till you try, right? And I'm just trying to hit as many of them as I can. Kind of digging that. I think I'm going to do something over here too with some of these flowers. Just so we have a little bit more dimension on them too. Okay, so that's what I'm going to play with with those for now. And then before I go any further, I'm going to take this archival ink pad. This is from Ranger, but you can use any archival pad or you can use a Sharpie or any kind of marker that's permanent. And I'm just going to rub over the edges of my book. I like to have a black outline. If I get to a spot that I can't do this on, then we'll use a marker on those spots. But I thought this would be a lot faster than using a marker. I really like the new, well, newer mini Tim Holtz scissors. I have to say, they, um, at first I was scared I wouldn't like them. I don't know why, but I really, really do like them. I think they're a terrific addition to the Tim Holtz scissor family. I love the middle size of all of them. I like these and the middle ones the best because the middle ones um, don't have a really long blade and so I don't have to open them a long way to get the to get them to work. I was afraid when I got these that I think that I was afraid that the handle would not be as large as the regular handles, so then I wouldn't be able to stick my fingers in there as easily, but they do. They, the, the grips on them are as rubbery and are as simple to use as the other ones. So that's my two cents on these. I really recommend them highly. Let's see, I'm going to put this right there. 
So I decided after I played with the yellow texture paste that I didn't like it as much. So with things like this, I don't know if you know this or not, but it's really easy to fix your mistakes. All you have to do is cut out more napkin and glue it over. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to put a little bit more of this collage podge out and get my brush. I'm going to brush it over this bottom section because I decided the first thing I didn't like, well, I didn't like this uh, pot after I put the uh, yellow texture paste on it. So I might as well fix that first. And I'm just going to glue glue the base back over again. And now we have a better looking pot. Like that. And I put a couple wrinkles in it on purpose. Like that. Then I also didn't like this pot. So same thing. You just put more of your glue you could use regular white glue for this part if you wanted to. Or um, Mod Podge. If you like Mod Podge, you could use that. I did the same thing with this pot in the middle. I just glued another piece on it. And then I decided it'd be fun if I made a continuous table because this napkin was cut, it, the basically the seam of it so that it's, you know, the fold is on this part and there were two different tables. I didn't like the two different table look. So I thought what I would do is make my own table. Let's let her dry and see what it comes out like once it's dry. I decided what I was going to do now that these are this is dry. I decided I would use some of this crystal effects. It's really getting old. I don't even know if I'll get it to come out. So I'm going to try and see if I can get it to come out. And if I can't, I'm going to use this spoon and see if that'll help get it to come out. And I think it's going to be too thick. I don't know if any of you have had this happen where your crystal effects doesn't want to come out. Let me know because I'm just going to free will it with a spoon because that's the way I like to roll. So now we're going to let this dry and hopefully it'll look really cool. I do think the one more thing that I want to do, and I'm not sure how to do it, is I want to put the word dream across this. I have this stamp that says dream. I don't know if you can see that because, um, well, I'll show you what it looks like on this side. It's, a, it's dream, but I put it on upside down because I'm smart that way. But anyway, um, the word dream, I want to do something with that, but I I thought about doing it with embossing powders, but I'm afraid that they'll catch the uh, the uh, collage podge or the um, napkin on fire. So, you know, these are the things I think about sometimes. So I want to make sure that I do this right, and so that's my plan. So I decided what I would do is stamp the word dream on this yellow tissue paper. I stamped it on white first and I liked it, but I started thinking about my background and my background is yellow and I just so happen to have some yellow tissue paper. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stamp the, ooh, oh, that would have been bad. I'm just gonna stamp the word dream in several places on this. I don't know if I'm gonna use it um, in a row or if I'm going to try one and go with that but I thought it'd be fun to just stamp it a bunch of times and see what I like about it you know what I mean I've got our collage podge I'm just gonna 
dump it on my brush. Should be enough. And I have several of these dream words. Mm, I think I'm going to go with this one first. Well, here it is dry. I added the dreams as I, I think I said that and showed it, but I might have forgotten. I really like the way they came off blending into the background with that yellow paper. The only one that kind of sticks out is this one at the top, but I really like it. And I'm really happy with the, with the glossy accents. What's that called? Crystal effects, sorry and how that really added to the dimension of it. I hope that all of you will consider getting yourself a kid's cardboard book and we'll continue in our series of making our own art journal out of it. I think it's a lot of fun and I hope you did too. That you'll give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.